What's up everybody? I'm Corey. I'm the director of photography for Clone Cops and today we're going to take a look at a few clips from one of the early scenes from the movie and talk about some lighting breakdowns. If you haven't already, make sure you take a look at the trailer. It's available now at clonecopsmovie.com and let's jump right into it. So we're going to start eyes. with the gang Who hideout where we first initially meet the gang from Clone That's Cops. We can't use the uh, and we spend a lot of time in this medicine. first setup. Uh, I think about a week initially, and, um, and I just absolutely love this room. Uh, on one entire side of the room, we had almost floor-to-ceiling windows. Uh, they had this really beautiful natural texture that was like a, a fiberglass uh, kind of texture. And then on the other side of the room, we built this really nice organic um, kind of soft box with uh, big, uh, dirty plastic sheeting uh, with the help of uh, production design. It was great. Allowed us to create this really quick, fast, 360 degree uh, lighting setup and, and some really good, quick uh, camera coverage as well. So it allowed us to move through a lot of, a lot of pages, a lot of scenes really quickly. That I can disable. Not from here, right? I might have to go out on a heist, Mom. The new guy's been out more times than no. me. No, out of the question, it's too dangerous. It is the best possible option. Okay, this place was designed to keep people like us out. It's a rigged system. It's only rigged if you play by the rules. How about this light bulb? Just the little light bulb that could just work in absolutely freaking overtime, right? How long am I supposed <laughs> to wait for you to trust me? I trust you. I just... You're not ready. Thank you, so already from this angle, you can kind of see a couple of different things that we've got going on here. First, we have this really beautiful kind of exaggerated daylight push coming from the windows on this side. But then you can also see kind of a color push coming from this side of the room here and a little bit here. Uh, but what's great is you don't really see that bleeding onto the walls back here. Uh, and we'll talk about how we got that accomplished uh, here in just a second. Uh, but this, like, I really love this framing and some of the work that we were able to get done around this table, even with a lot of the really big, kind of uh, really large, soft light sources from both sides of the room here. You're better off hiding behind your keyboard. I am not hiding. Not as. And you can see here again a lot of shape we were able to create, even again with the big soft sources on on both sides. Uh, we were constantly working uh, eight by negatives and uh, a twelve by negative around the room uh, to also help shape and control what was working. And then also, a lot of times we were uh, augmenting what was going on uh, with Astera Titan tubes and light socks. Uh, to just be able to carry either the color that was coming from one direction or to be able to just fill depending on the direction that the actors were looking if they weren't necessarily uh, in the uh, optimal uh, position with the, the big natural soft boxes that we had created. Uh, those Titan tubes in the light socks, uh, we, we worked absolutely overtime in this room, kind of working them around. It was great. So here, this view, this is, I think the first shot, this definitely is the first shot in the film where you actually get to see exactly how big these windows really are in this room. And there are five of these that run the length of the room. Um, and so our lighting set up from here, we actually had a 1200D, a 1200D, a 600D, a 600D, and a 600C in this orientation as we went down. And the reason we had a 600C at the very end, the very last window actually was not the same kind of original texture and color cast as what you see in these. It looked like it had been broken out and replaced with just a clean plate glass. Uh, so we wanted to be able to create uh, a little bit of that same color cast and color texture um, along with matching everything else. So we put a 600C uh, down at the end to be able to match a little bit as well. But love the kind of natural gradient and kind of color push that that gave us. Uh, How's, how? And then you can also see 
again, you can start to see this uh, color push on our actors faces here that we're getting from this big natural soft box on this side of the room as well. And here in just a couple of shots, we'll actually reverse and we'll see this other side of the room for the first time. So if we jump ahead a couple of shots, this we're uh, just one shot away from reversing and seeing the opposite side of the room here. But here we can see Cypher has this uh, little bit of push, obviously from uh, this opposite side of the room in the softbox here. But the other thing we have here is this uh, light gag that we've built to emulate a computer monitor. It's just a beaver board and has four aperture MCs uh, that are emulating a, a computer monitor. And at various points throughout the movie, we have different light gags that play on there based on whatever is intended to be um, on the computer screen at a time. And again, you can see the different color push that's here playing off a really nice contrast of the giant uh, windows that are playing off in the in the background there. I don't know. Why don't you ask Kinder? He sounds pretty clued in. Knock it off. What's the alarm? It's just a perimeter alert. That's probably one of those. So now this reverse is the first time we have the opportunity to see this uh, nice natural uh, big diffusion wall that we've created. And again here, this we actually have uh, four Nova 300s rigged on combos almost to the ceiling. Uh, but uh, you can't you can't see those. Um, and originally the intent was uh, for this wall to be open and to have some deep texture there. Uh, and for there to be old abandoned appliances and boxes and just feel very abandoned warehouse like. Uh, but again, we wanted to be able to light in a way that we could quickly move and flip the room for coverage, uh, knowing from a scheduling standpoint, uh, we wanted to be as flexible and nimble as possible. So still allowing for uh, a, a nice, simple lighting design and also at the same time having a really nice soft push that we could still shape as needed with some large negative. Uh, this seemed like a really good compromise. And at the end of the day, we were really pleased with the quality of light that this gave us. And then uh, our production uh, design team uh, really came in clutch with uh, uh, really dirtying up at the end of the day, uh, construction plastic sheeting and just walling off the entire side of the room, allowing us to create uh, this really fantastic in-camera uh, softbox, which was amazing. Uh, at the end of the day, I loved it, uh, and it worked out really well. Mega rats, those things are the size of toddlers. Let me just, wait, it's a vehicle, and whatever it is, it has a government transponder. What does that mean? It means it's probably police. I got it. No, no, hold on, Tara. How many? Looks like just one. Here, kid. Take this, you know, just in case. It's probably. So here you can see they're getting a nice, really soft push from the wall of Nova's. But they're also getting a nice little kick from the light gag down here. And then we're also carrying uh, what's coming from that back wall uh, with some uh, Astera Titans in uh, light socks to also uh, be a little kicker uh, just off camera to augment that so you can see uh, some beauty there. A troll, let's wake Granny up. Granny, that never works. What do you know about it? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I was just thinking. Why are you smiling? Eye contact, kid. Eye contact. Kinder, go stand by the door and wait for my signal to open it. We're gonna have to time this just right. That's it. 
I hope you enjoyed uh, this quick and dirty breakdown of uh, one of our early scenes from the movie. Uh, we'll definitely do a couple more of these as we get a little further into the movie. Uh, but uh, if you haven't already, make sure you check out the trailer, clonecopsmovie.com. And uh, until next time, we'll catch you around. <laughs>